Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Morichiro didn't save Kotetsu in the Swordsmith Village? How would the course of the story change? Would this one decision end up affecting the rest of the Hashira's fate? Which characters would end up dying this time? Continue watching this video to find out how the fight would have turned out. In the thrilling conclusion of Episode 3 from Demon Slayer's captivating Swordsmith Village arc, we witness a defining moment for the Miss Hashira, Murichiro Tokito. In a surprising turn of events, Murichiro deviates from his usual calculated and utilitarian nature by choosing to rescue the young swordsmith in training, Kotetsu, from a menacing demon attack rather than returning to the main battle against Upper Moon 4. This decision reveals the impact of a prior conversation between Murichiro and our protagonist, Tanjiro. Although it may seem like a classic anime moment, where the hero's compassionate words miraculously touch another character's heart, Tanjiro's influence on Murichiro runs much deeper. This episode showcases Tanjiro's exceptional emotional intelligence and his remarkable ability to adapt his empathy to connect with individuals on a profound level. He recognizes that every person carries their own unique experiences and emotions, allowing him to establish a heartfelt connection even with someone as logical and stoic as Murichiro. Through his subtle approach, Tanjiro's words of kindness resonate with Murichiro, leading him to make a choice that counters his usual logical framework. This pivotal scene reminds us of the power of empathy and how genuine understanding can transform even the most hardened hearts. However, Murichiro was not always like this. Before the death of his twin brother and when the siblings were 11, Murichiro's personality was that of a much more compassionate and optimistic individual the polar opposite of his current disposition. Having originally taken after his father, he was shown to display a higher level of kindness and understanding, believing he should aim to do good for others if he wanted good to be done for him. After his brother was killed at the hands of a demon, Morichiro subsequently lost his memories and held an omnipresent rage deeply suppressed inside of him that inevitably drove his intense training. After this memory loss, he started exhibiting the indifferent attitude of his twin brother he is now known for as a Hashira. During his interactions with Tanjiro, Murichiro started regaining his memories of his past, causing him to behave more maturely and seriously, even choosing to help Kotetsu when his life was in danger instead of ignoring him. After his memories fully returned, Murichiro began expressing more emotions and became more confident in himself and started caring more for his peers in the Demon Slayer corpse. Now, what if all of these didn't affect Murichiro? What if he continued to be cold-hearted despite his interactions with Tanjiro? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to let me know that you want more what-if videos just like this. We are very close to 3,000 subscribers, and I appreciate you guys' support very much. Everything starts back in Chapter 98, when the upper rank demons gather after the defeat of Gyotaro, the upper rank 6. In this meeting, we see the two main upper moons that the Demon Slayer Corpse will eventually face, Hantengu and Gyoko. Gyoko then tells Muzan that he has gained valuable information and that he has found where the Swordsmith Village is located. Both the Upper Moon 4 and 5 are now sent on a mission. After the battle in the Entertainment District, Tanjiro finally wakes up after being unconscious for quite a while. He then received a message from Haganezuka saying that he won't be made another sword after his last sword got chipped. With this, this led Tanjiro to go to the Swordsmith Village in order to get a new katana. This time, he won't be with his buddies in Zenitsu and Inosuke. After meeting Mitsuri, he goes out to look for the secret weapon in the village that makes you stronger. The next morning, he sees Murichiro and Kotetsu arguing about the key to the Yurichi Type-0 doll. This causes Tanjiro to interfere with their conversation, and Murichiro seems to be cold-hearted as he says some harsh things without any emotion. In some way, he was right, but it wasn't the type of things you could say so casually to others. He says that swordsmiths can't fight nor save someone's life, and that all they can do is make weapons. However, Tanjiro defends Kotetsu and counters by stating that swordsmiths are important too as they create swords for swordsmen to use. In this way, both parties need each other in order to survive against the demons. Despite Tanjiro's little speech, Murichiro still seems unfazed by Tanjiro's heroism and eventually knocks him out. Right when Tanjiro wakes up, Kotetsu immediately shows his gratitude for Tanjiro's actions as he defended him from Murichiro. Tanjiro then trains with the doll with only 5 arms since Murichiro was able to destroy one of its limbs and keep its sword. Tanjiro acknowledges Murichiro's skills and abilities in swordsmanship, so he strives to become stronger just like him. Following the defeat of the doll, he finds an ancient tarnished katana inside of it. But Haganezuka overhears their conversation and takes the sword in order to take care of it for Tanjiro. 
Back in one of the houses, Muricho wakes Tanjiro up from his sleep and asks him if he knows a swordsmith named Kanemori. Tanjiro tells him that he does not know where Kanemori is and that he is probably with Haganezuka. Tanjiro offers to help Murichiro in looking for Kanemori. Murichiro then asks him why he would do such a thing. Tanjiro then states that helping others often ends up helping yourself. Instead of reacting to Tanjiro's message in a shocking manner, Murichiro stays unfazed and wonders why people would do such a thing if they have their own problems to deal with. He then rejects Tanjiro's offer to help him find Kanemori. Tanjiro then insists on helping him as he has nothing else to do while waiting for his katana. But their conversation then gets interrupted as Hantengu, the Upper Moon 4, enters the room. Murichiro then attacks him with his misbreathing fourth form, shifting flow slash. But Hantengu quickly dodges. After Murichiro finally cut off the demon's head, it's split into two and Murichiro gets blown away by Karaku's fan. Moments later, the fight with Tanjiro and the rest stays the same up until Murichiro is left to make a decision on the way back. He hears screams of a child, and it seems to be Katetsu's. He now has to decide whether to get back or save Katetsu. Now, instead of remembering Tanjiro's words, he chooses to prioritize people who seem to be more valuable. After some time, Katetsu then gets killed by one of Gyoko's giant flounders. Without Katetsu being able to ask Murichiro for help to save Kanemori, he then dies off-screen moments later. Murichiro then arrives to see that there are now four clones, with Tanjiro battling Orogi, Genya on Aizetsu, and Nezuko getting double-teamed by both Sekido and Karaku. Sekido decides to strike Nezuko with his lightning instead of just standing around as it would be more difficult with the addition of Murichiro to the fight. Karaku then fights Murichiro instead since he thinks it would be more fun. Unfortunately, for Murichiro, he gets blown away once again towards another direction. He lands nearby the same hovel where Hagen Nezuka was retouching Tanjiro's sword. He senses a demon nearby, and Gyoko then appears. A 1v1 battle between the both of them now commences. Gyoko proceeds to use his thousand needle fish kill to attack Murichiro, but he dodges all of the needles and doesn't end up getting pierced this time since he currently has nobody to save. But he doesn't know that Haganezuka is right inside the hovel. Sometime during the immense battle, Murichiro gets too aggressive and he gets caught by Gyoko's water prison pot. Gyoko then hears noises coming from the hovel and he decides to take a look leaving Murichiro by himself. He would have more air to perform another strike since he was not poisoned. But he believes that it is already over and does not end up remembering his memories of his father as Tanjiro's words did not end up striking him. Without anybody to save him, Murichiro ends up suffocating and Haganezuka ends up getting killed by Gyoko. Without Murichiro being able to kill Gyoko, he ends up continuing to terrorize the village. While this was happening, Mitsuri ended up arriving to help Tanjiro and the rest in fighting Zohakuten. The fight would go on just like in the manga up until Urami runs away from Tanjiro. Without Murichiro being able to lend Tanjiro a sword, Urami eats the villagers and gets stronger. He does just enough to be able to hold off Tanjiro and flee since he does not have enough time to kill them due to the sunrise. Mitsuri then ends up surviving due to Zohakuten's body being withdrawn back. It is also revealed that Nezuko has conquered the sun because of Tamayo's help. However, they certainly did not win. Yoko ended up wiping out pretty much the entire swordsmith village and escaped. Murichiro has also died, which will certainly affect the upcoming events. Without Murichiro, it would seem like the Demon Slayers would end up losing the final battle against Muzan and his upper rank demons. After the battle, Hantengu reports back to Muzan that there is a demon who has conquered the sun. Whether Hantengu died or not, Muzan would have known due to his cells being instilled in Hantengu. The only survivors left are Tanjiro, Nezuko, Mitsuri, Genya, and a few other villagers. To sum it all up, without Kotetsu being saved, Murichiro would have been in deep trouble as he would have no help in battling Gyoko. Without helping others, he would not be helped as well. This crucial decision would end up leading to the downfall of the Demon Slayer corpse. In the end, the two upper rank demons and Gyoko and Hantengu end up winning as they pretty much wiped out the entire swordsmith village and returned back alive. I will now be ending the video. What do you think would have happened if Morichiro didn't save Kotetsu in the swordsmith village? And if you have other what if ideas that you would like me to make, let me know down in the comments. Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Gyotaro fought by himself as the sole upper rank 6? Check this video out. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you for watching.